I offer this amendment with Mr. Scott Peters of California. Uh, Mr. Peters and I both have an interest in saving money and in putting our monies wisely in research on renewable energies, which saves individuals' money, individual citizens' money, and protects our environment. And using that money, instead of putting the money in the budget to do research on coal and fossil fuels that contribute to global warming and a threat to our environment. The uh, fact is the, the Department of Energy's energy efficiency program has been effective. This would increase it by $10.3 million. Uh, and this program is underfunded already in the bill. And it would take $15 million from funds that are in the budget to, for coal research and development. $15 million that are in excess of the President's budget request. The Department of Energy's energy efficiency programs partners with private industry, small business, and academics to facilitate research development and deployment of innovative energy efficiency technologies in manufacturing, buildings, and homes. In this collaboration with these different st st stakeholders, they determine the best practices that can be found and then put into commercial use, resulting in energy saving advancements that create jobs and give businesses competitive advantages with foreign competitors. Increasing energy efficiency is often done in ways that the individual citizen benefits in their home by saving money on more energy efficient devices and appliances. We work on these in the Energy Department now, and they finalize new efficiency standards for more than 30 household and commercial products. These include dishwashers, refrigerators, water heaters, just the general stuff you got in your kitchen and your home. And because of the Energy Department's new efficiency standards, consumers are estimated to save more than $400 billion, $400 billion for our constituents, consumers, and we'll be cutting greenhouse emissions by 1.8 billion metric tons through 2030. That's a lot of help to the environment and a whole lot of help to our constituents in saving money. Just as an example, walk-in coolers and freezers. The rules that have been proposed will yield $37 billion in savings while cutting 159 million metric tons of carbon dioxide. That's the equivalent of taking 30 million cars off the road. So as the cost of energy continues to pose a burden on the American consumers' wallets, our voters, our taxpayers, our constituents, and it costs them more money, and extreme weather causes climate change, which threatens the fauna and the flora, our property and the way of life, we need to find ways to reduce energy consumption and decrease those adverse effects upon our environment. We need to redouble our efforts at this point on renewable energy and energy efficiency. And, and the efforts by this amendment would save money. It would protect our environment by having re more research on energy efficiency standards, save our consumers and constituents money, and protect our environment at the same time, and yet not have us invest needlessly in fossil fuels, which is the opposite direction we should be going. So I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this amendment, show they're both for fiscal, conservative, sound, budget deficit reduction programs, as well as protect the environment and be concerned about the effects of, on the pocketbook of our individual consumers.